endocrine biologist. This session where we're going to look at coenzymes and cofactors. So first of all, a coenzyme. Now these are normally inorganic ions. They are not permanently bound to the enzyme and they are needed to activate the enzyme. So they are needed to form a specific complementary shape to the active site and they do take part in the reaction. So it's important here because it is forming that complementary and specific active site so that the substrate can bind to form an enzyme substrate complex. So that coenzyme is vital to this process. Now a coenzyme, you need to know several of these when you get into A2. You'll meet them a lot in respiration and photosynthesis. So this is your NAD, FAD, NADP. Uh, at AS, you don't need to know those examples. All you need to know at AS is that it, a coenzyme is organic and it's used to help form an enzyme substrate complex. Now, you also need to know at both AS and A2 that as the volume or um, concentration of coenzymes increase within a reaction, then also the rate of reaction would also increase, uh, which is pretty self-explanatory, but some students do forget that. Um, so I've gone through where they're needed. The next one is a cofactor. Now a cofactor is inorganic. These are permanently bound to the enzyme and they're needed to form that active hollow enzyme. So hollow enzyme is an active enzyme. So they help to produce the specific shape of the active site, but they're not actively involved in that part of the reaction. So although they help to form the active site and they help to form that um, complementary and specific shape, the cofactor, um, they're not actually involved in the reaction at all. Um, so that is what a cofactor is. Um, a prosthetic group. Um, so for this, we have iron acting as a prosthetic group in um, hemoglobin. So they have four prosthetic groups within hemoglobin. And there are four heme groups made up of iron. And these are the prosthetic groups. Um, so a prosthetic group is a non-protein group that is permanently bound to that particular uh, protein or enzyme, um, which um, has a particular function in that in, in that particular protein. So within obviously a hemoglobin, that prosthetic group here is used to help to carry the oxygen around the body. Now, there are specific examples that you need to know here. So you need to know that chlorine, a chlorine ion is a cofactor for amylase. And you need to know that a zinc ion ZN2 plus is a prosthetic group for carbonic anhydrase, which is used in the, the Bohr effect and the Bohr shift, which I'll put a link in the description below. Um, and uh, so these ones, chlorine ion and the zinc um, ion, these are heavily used within a multiple choice questions. So you need to know that chlorine is a cofactor for amylase, that zinc ZN2 plus is a prosthetic group for carbonic anhydrase. They're so popular within uh, multiple choice questions. You need to be able to spot the correct option there within the multiple choice. As for this one here, vitamins as a source of coenzymes. Now, uh, this could be a really good place where they could use any suggest questions, where they could suggest anything as a vitamin here. Um, uh, as a source of coenzymes. So like I've mentioned before, we just need to remember here that as the volume or concentration of coenzyme is going to increase, so will the rate of reaction. Um, they might link this into other things such as inhibition as well, which is in the next video. Um, so guys, that's pretty much everything you need to know on coenzymes and cofactors. Good luck with your exams and all the best with your studies.